What's going on guys? I am Matthias and today I thought I'd do something a little bit different for my Ask Matt. Today all of the questions are based around copyright issues, copyright claims, strikes, all of that regarding YouTube because you guys have a lot of questions. Like a lot of questions. So I picked the questions that I felt best represented the biggest questions that everyone had. Now, if you guys have more questions on this topic and you wanna see me do a part two of this copyright Q&A, give this video a like and ask your question down in the comments below. I will do my best to do a second episode of this answering the most pertinent questions that you guys have. Let's get started. Has anyone started up a class action project yet? Not that I'm aware of, but lawyers are contacting me and they are asking my opinion on certain events, so who knows if that's far away or close. We just don't know yet. On average, how many of your videos per week are flagged for copyright infringement regardless of any wrongdoing? Since my content now doesn't have much to do with others' intellectual property, I don't see copyright flags as much. Um, however, one of my good friends, Chad Wildclay, you can actually check out his channel right here. He frequently makes parodies, music video parodies, and covers, stuff like that, and he gets copyright claims, I would say, almost on every single video. The crazy thing is now, he's getting copyright claims on videos that are private before they even upload. So he's uploading a video, before the video is even done uploading, before anyone can watch the video, he's getting copyright claims. It's even private at that point too. Will the problem of copyright ever be solved on YouTube? I really hope so. I really feel like um, YouTube will try to make some type of effort hopefully, if they're smart, to make their creators happy. How many times have you been flagged for copyright? Overall, on all my channels combined, I have about 30 copyright claims. Why can anyone claim your video even if they don't have anything to do with the content? YouTube makes it really easy for copyright holders or non-copyright holders to claim video ownership of content that they do own or that they don't own because there's no one checking the validity of these claims. So if no one's checking if these claims are valid or not, what's to stop people from just making all of these invalid claims and just making money off of the backs of other hard workers? What was your worst moment involving YouTube's copyright claims and how much of a toll has it taken in your life? I think one of my worst moments is back when I was making music videos and music and music video parodies. It's really, really difficult to see something that you put so much blood, sweat, and tears into making just claimed like that. And immediately all of that time, energy, and money that you put into something just just goes to someone else. Why does it exist anyway? The copyright claim system exists to protect the rights of the content creator. So if I make something and then someone goes and re-uploads that video, that system is theoretically supposed to protect that for me so that I can go and claim that video if someone's stealing my content. Why does YouTube keep such a useless feature in most respects that only gets abused? YouTube has to have a copyright claim system per settlements and lawsuits that they've been through. Now. The fact that it doesn't work isn't that big of a deal to them currently because the only people that it's hurting is the creators. And the creators don't really have enough money to fight it. So YouTube is in this state where they're not too worried about creators attacking them because they don't have any money. Are the problems that are happening with the copyright and claims changing how you feel towards YouTube? Honestly, the first 10, 15 videos that I ever uploaded have been claimed. I'm no stranger to copyright claims. This is back in like 2012, I believe. So since YouTube has initially put in this system, it's been broken. It's just now with the rise and popularity of YouTube, people are finding easy ways to game this system. Is it true that you can use up to blank seconds of copyrighted material in content? That is absolutely, without a doubt, 100% not true. You cannot use anyone's copyrighted content in your content unless it follows fair use. Why is giving credit to the creator of whatever you're using not enough? Credit and rights are two entirely different things. At one point over here, you're dealing with copyright infringement and rights to a specific set of work. And on the other side, you're dealing with plagiarism. You always wanna give credit to the person who made the original content because otherwise you'll be seen as a plagiarist and people will accuse you of stealing other people's work, even if it is fair use. But just giving credit for copyrighted work is not enough, especially if you're 
content doesn't follow under fair use because you could be making money off of their content. That's why credit isn't enough. Do people who make Let's Plays get their videos claimed or is it just with stuff like music and people with contracts? Let's players are definitely not safe and that's why before you play a game you have to read the terms of use of every game. Now, a lot of games are hip to the fact that if you play their game, it's not necessarily transformative, but it is a huge amount of promotion that they stand to benefit from. And that's why a lot of gaming, even some gaming, like Minecraft for instance, in their TOS, says that you can actually use their content and their intellectual property to make your own. It says that because they realized early on that that means free promotion. That's not necessarily true for every game or company as an example would be Nintendo. Now, if you play something of Nintendo's, odds are you're probably gonna be hit with a copyright claim. Now, that is Nintendo's legal right to do because it's their intellectual property and just providing commentary over just an unedited gameplay isn't transformative enough. It's not transformative enough. So those claims are based on valid material. Now, it's really dumb of Nintendo to do that because they don't necessarily understand this progressive medium that we're providing them exposure, but it's their right. On a scale of one to 10, how bad is the issue? I would say it's a solid seven and rising fast. Can you copy the right to copyright or the right to copy not right? Can you write the copy? This is urgent. <laughs> you can write the copy, but you can't copy the right because that's someone else's material. Have you ever done the copyright to someone? Obviously, I don't know what it's called. I have many times claimed the videos of others that were using my content. So if someone just re-uploaded my video in full, I've done my best to claim it because that's my intellectual property that I worked really hard on and there's no reason why someone else just that just did a few clicks of a button can make money off of my hard work. Now, there are other times where I explicitly asked you guys to re-upload and obviously I'm not gonna claim those. That would be just silly. Why are they even making a big deal about little things like this? Regardless of who you're talking about in this scenario, rights are a huge issue and they always will be a huge issue. So when someone steals your intellectual property, that shouldn't fly. Do they disappear after six months or do they stay forever and ever and ever and ever and ever? So a copyright claim will stay for the extent of your video. So if you have your video online for years and years and years, that copyright claim will be on that video until you delete it. Did your daily vlogging channel get a copyright strike for playing music in the background? With my knowledge and education in fair use, luckily I've been keen to the fact that whenever I hear a song playing in the background, I'll turn off the camera or I won't start vlogging or I'll ask the whoever has the song on to turn it off. So luckily I have not been hit with one of those claims, but that is definitely a possibility that I'm sure most vloggers go through. If copyright didn't matter, what song would you have loved to have done for lyrics in real life? Let's rephrase this question. If fair use was correctly enforced, I would have loved to do every song that just has bizarre lyrics. Because let's be honest, who talks like that in real life? What's the best way to avoid copyright claims when you're just starting out on YouTube? The best way to avoid copyright claims is making content entirely of your own intellectual property. So you have to make it original, which is really difficult to do these days, but that's the best way. Otherwise, it's just part of the landscape. Can potentially any video be striked under an illegitimate claim? Absolutely, yes. Any video can succumb to an illegitimate claim. It's just a matter of someone finding it and deciding that it's theirs. Why does fair use exist when it's clearly not enforced? As you know, fair use exists to protect the copyright holder, the intellectual property of the person who made it. Now, it's not enforced because of the scale and magnitude. Now, YouTube has been growing exponentially unlike any other social platform ever to exist. That being said, there are certain problems that and risks that this poses when a business grows exponentially, sometimes the people behind the business aren't necessarily ready for that kind of growth, so they don't scale accordingly. One of the things that I would suggest for YouTube is to hire more people. Now, not to go over every single claim because that's unrealistic, but to put forth an effort and add more people to the fight so that at least the creators that are making them money aren't hit with these invalid claims. Do you think that the Fine Brothers made a mistake or were people overreacting to it? This is a really tough question because I know the Fine Brothers and I know that their intentions 
were good. Their intentions were good. Their intentions were to protect their individual intellectual property, property that they've made, that they've worked a decade on building. Now, as many people will try to tell you that they're horrible and they're, they're, they're spiteful and vindictive, the reality of the situation is, is they presented their idea in just the absolute worst way. And they didn't necessarily see that we're just on the cusp of this copyright revolution and that MCNs are not necessarily really well liked in this day and age. Ultimately, they've made a bad choice with trying to trademark some of these words. Now, I don't believe that their intentions were malicious, but it was definitely a bad move. Shouldn't they get arrested and or charged for that? For this, we're talking about illegitimate claims. And yes, they should definitely have repercussions. If you file an invalid claim, that is punishable by law. Do you think a system like innocent until proven guilty would work well? On this scale, innocent until proven guilty is tough, but that's that's America, that's the law, that's, that's how things should be. Right now, it's guilty until proven innocent. Do you think YouTube will ever get their copyright system together? Also, love your work. I really hope so, because if they don't, I feel like that would spell the end of YouTube. I feel like creators would eventually decide to find another place to go. Why do you know everything about this? Good question. As I said before, I am actually educated on these topics. I've actually taken courses in fair use and copyright infringement because I graduated from CSUN as an audio engineer and that was part of the curriculum. As an aspiring YouTuber, how can I protect myself? Or is the target on my content not as big because I'm a small channel. Content claims work in various ways. One is automatic, it's just a bot and an algorithm that trolls through everything that's uploaded on YouTube, and the other is manual claims. You're probably not at risk from manual claims, but you are at risk no matter what you're uploading on YouTube you're at risk for that bot just claiming your stuff and you're at even more risk that no one's going to rectify the situation because you have a small channel. Do you think it's even worth starting up a YouTube channel with all of this craziness going on? That's a really difficult question because a lot of people by my previous video and everyone else's videos on the subject are kind of terrified about starting up a YouTube whether it's for a business or whether it's for your own personal content and that's tough. Like, I don't wanna scare you away from making your content, making things that you wanna make. I don't wanna scare you away from that. But the risks of any medium are going to be real. No matter what you're doing in life, there are gonna be risks. Sometimes you have to figure out if it's worth it or not. Will there be copyright material in this video? Yes. As you can see right now, I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt. You can see right there, that is a Star Lord mask. These are actual trademarks and copyrighted material from other companies. However, this is absolutely legal for me to have in here. This doesn't even apply to fair use. Now, I'm using this t-shirt and these posters and that mask in the manner that it's intended to be used by the copyright holder. This is meant to be a t-shirt. Now, if I go and say, hey, Star Wars sponsored this video, or I work for Star Wars, and then start spouting out all this random stuff, Star Wars, Lucasfilm, they're gonna have a problem with that because that's false information and I'm defaming or slandering their brand or identity or trademark. This comment has been removed on copyright because it mentioned a creator, Matthias, without permission. I know this was a joke comment, but it actually sparks a really interesting notion and that is copywriting someone's voice, someone's thoughts and that has happened multiple times before you've seen it with the i hate everything debacle his his channel being taken down because the creator of the video or of the film that he didn't like and criticized didn't like his his criticism so he took it down and right now it's really dangerous because we're getting to a point where this system youtube's copyright system is being abused so bad to the point where people who have legitimate just criticisms and ideas get shut down because of people that don't like those ideas. If you buy a game, can you say you own it online? No, you own the copy of that game. You do not own the game. You are not a rights holder to that game. You do not own the intellectual property, nor the actual game. This works the same way with music. People think that if you buy music, that you can do whatever you want with it. But that's not the truth. That's not the case because it can potentially harm the initial market of that said product, game, or music. Have you ever had a video taken down because of copyright reasons? No, and the reason being is you have a couple options when someone tries to claim your video. The process starts a little bit like this. First, you dispute the claim, 
and you tell them the reason why you have the rights to upload what you uploaded. Second off, if they accept that, then they'll release the claim and you can go on your merry way. If they don't, and they reinstate the claim, then you have another option, you can appeal it. Now this appeal process is the part where things can go haywire for you. If that company just decides, you know what, no, it's mine, I want it, then they have a couple options. They can enforce a strike on your channel, which neuters your channel, doesn't allow you to be monetized, it doesn't allow you to upload videos longer than 15 minutes. Second off, they can just take down the video entirely. So at that point, I've just chosen to leave my videos up for my viewers to enjoy, regardless if I'm making money on them or not. I feel like you guys at least are liking and enjoying it, so it's worth keeping it up. How are people able to claim copyright on parody videos? Parodies are supposed to be covered under the Fair Use Act. That is entirely true. Parodies are covered under fair use. However, there's a little side note here. Satire is not. Satire is when you're using someone's work to poke fun at something else and not at the original work. The reason why we have so much trouble with parody is because the definition of a parody is really, really vague and people perceive it differently. So until the definition of what a parody is is really well defined, they're just gonna take down parodies. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you wanna see a part two, make sure you give this video a like, share it, Make sure you share it to inform and educate other people and leave more questions down below for part two if you're interested in seeing that. Now, if I got anything wrong in this and you know I got something wrong in this, links, 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 links. I would love to be proven wrong. Just make sure if you're gonna prove me wrong that you have factual evidence backing up your case and I will make alterations in the description of this video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. This is just a start to a really long battle here on YouTube that hopefully we will win. But thanks for being a part of it. High five.